Hi guys, my name is Omara and I'm a second year medical student at University of Nottingham. The number one comment I get on all of my how to get an A star A level revision videos is Ah, but how can I revise if I don't know how to learn the content? At A level I achieved an A star, A star A in biology, chemistry and physics respectively. I achieved A stars in all three of these subjects at GCSE and for the past four years I have been a biology, chemistry and physics tutor for all ages up to 18. So I have a lot of experience revising and getting the grades myself and I have a lot of experience in teaching pupils of all capabilities how to get the best grades possible when it comes to sitting exams. So in this video I'm going to be telling you guys exactly how you can go about learning the content so that you actually understand it and can answer questions on it. Make sure to check out the timestamps in the description below and as always like, subscribe and turn on the post notifications. So learning is a three stage process. The first stage involves understanding what you need to know. The second stage involves active recall and the third stage involves space repetition. Understanding what you need to know means that you're not going to get caught out in exams with a topic you've never heard before and you're not going to spend hours revising a topic that you don't actually need to know. Active recall is the best evidence-based method to learning and revising content. So if you're reading your notes at this point, if you're still highlighting textbooks, if you're just writing flashcards as your main way of revising, stop right now. Active recall involves testing yourself on the topics. The last stage is space repetition. Now it's scientifically proven that facts will only get ingrained into your long-term memory, which is what you want, if you come across it several times. And the only way you can get the content to become ingrained in your long-term memory is by repeatedly going going over it and repeatedly doing active recall on that topic. So you and me are going to take a closer look at how we can fulfil each of these stages. The most important resource you'll need to fulfil this stage is your A-level specification. This is the guide that you should be using to create your revision notes i.e. making sure you've covered each specification point to come up with concise short flashcards. If you're struggling with creating concise flashcards on these topics, which I know a lot of you guys have commented on my videos saying, then I'd suggest that you take a look at the revision notes available on Physics and Maths Tutor for Biology, Chemistry and Physics, Chem Revise and Save My Exams because they have some great concise notes on each of the specification points. But then once you start revising or learning the content on your own, the first thing you should do, which I actually never did at A-level but I'm going to start doing it at medical school, is creating a spider diagram from memory where you basically map out the whole topic. This will allow you to create links in the topic and see how it all fits together which will make it so much easier to revise from. I suggest that you keep the spider diagram bare, don't just rewrite your notes and then once you finish revising that topic you go back and fill it in with a different pen colour on everything that you didn't remember. Now we've established how rereading your notes, simply writing flashcards and highlighting the textbooks are terrible revision strategies. So the way that I'd learn from my concise revision flashcards is by speaking through the topic out loud. And a bonus point, if I had someone there, I'd try to teach it to them. This is much more of an effective way than simply rereading your notes. I found this really helpful because depending on how easily I could talk through the topic, it told me how well I knew the topic. If I found that I kept stuttering or my mind kept going blank, then I knew I didn't quite know the topic. So what I'd do is that I'd go back, take a glance at my notes and then keep going. And research has actually shown that you often learn facts more easily if you get it wrong. So if you find yourself talking and you're getting what you're saying wrong, just have a glance and chances are you will be in a better position to memorise what you've just read. Now aside from talking through your notes or teaching it to someone, this may surprise you. The best way that you can revise is by doing questions. Now I know how uncomfortable it is. I remember in physics not understanding what was going on, being slapped with a bunch of past paper questions in front of me and my teacher saying do it and simply not knowing even how to answer any of the questions. Now also I remember in physics in year 12 being stuck on a BC. Now these aren't terrible grades I guess but I definitely would have made it to medical school if that's what I'd gotten in year 13 and I didn't understand. I'd written the most concise neat flashcards ever. I had taken so long to memorise what each of the flashcards said and I still wasn't doing well in physics. Not only till I started doing a mountain of past paper questions, textbook questions that I then marked 
and learnt and understood the corrections did I start getting the A, A star that I needed. There is no way that you're going to be able to do well in the application questions at A level if you have never practiced an application question before. Honestly, only a small percentage, I think it's like 20% of the questions that you're going to get given at A level are fact recall. And so when you're answering these questions, even if you haven't gone over the topic, glance over at your notes and read the relevant part and then use that to help you write the answers. Look at the corrections. If there's something in the corrections that you have no idea about, supplement it into your notes because that way you're constantly improving yourself. If you don't learn from your corrections then you're only as good as you were when you started doing the questions. So I definitely suggest that you use physics and maths tutor which have a whole host of past paper questions, even do textbook questions, um, even questions from other specifications. Just check that you're doing questions that will come up on your specification just because any question is going to be so valuable for you to practice. Your A-level schedule is going to be pretty hectic, so I wouldn't suggest revising from day one. Your priority has to be to create revision resources from day one. So once you get to year 13 study live, you're not like, ah, I need to create revision notes from the last two years for each of my A-level subjects. All you need to do is simply review them and do questions. So once you've finished a topic, for example, homeostasis or transition metals, simply on that weekend or a couple of weekends after that, start writing your revision flashcards using the specification, using the notes that I set mentioned on camera rise, physics and maths tutor, and save my exams. And my next tip is to literally use each homework you get given as a mini mock. Literally, you need to be in an internal competition with yourself and be a sweat. Try and get the best marks that you can in each homework because that way you're not relying on your study leave to start improving. You have been trying your best and learning from your mistakes from day one and that's two years worth of training your mind and training your exam technique. I literally had to nag my mechanics teacher so often and say, please explain this to me. I don't understand whatsoever. He would even start getting annoyed, but it didn't matter. Eventually I was able to figure out a process for answering different mechanics questions such as SUVATs, such as simple harmonic motion, um, until I was able to do it like second nature when it came to the exam. And if you do have the time, then why not just print out some questions and do them yourself and mark them. And as I said, learn from your corrections. However, come year 13, um, once you break for the Easter holidays, then I do suggest that you not only start reviewing your content, like I said, talking through it out loud, teaching it to someone, doing spider diagrams, but also doing space repetition. So do a topic, come back to that topic and do another set of questions three weeks later, another set of questions three weeks later. And then once you get before your exam, just start ramping it up and start doing full past papers. In summary, Focus on doing your revision notes throughout your A-levels. Don't leave it till the end, but do make sure on trying as hard as you can in your homework, in lessons, so you can continually be improving and making the most of this time. So my biology specific advice is to just memorize by talking it through, writing out the process, key processes as many times as possible until you've got them down. Homeostasis, respiration, eutrophication because you will get hit with a six marker a five marker on this then that can be the difference between an a and an a star also statistical questions are tricky so don't ignore them what i'd suggest that you do is find out the difference between validity accuracy and consistent data look at how you use statistical testing and also look at exam mark schemes and see how they want you to be answering application questions you will get good at chemistry if you could keep answering questions and learning from your corrections. What I like about chemistry is that the mark you get is fairly consistent with how hard you work. I literally spent hours just rewriting transition metal equations, doing as many calculations of every single type I could find on the internet as possible, writing up mechanisms until they became second nature, until they could throw anything at me and I could do it. With chemistry, it will save you because if you know the content, you will do well in the exams. So just focus on putting in the time, learning it, memorizing it, doing as many questions as possible. Also with chemistry, what I definitely suggest that you don't do is let's say you've covered group seven. You're like, okay, I don't understand this, but you know, I just need to move on. I've got so much other homework to deal with. So take the time out, figure out the topic there and then because you're even less likely to know how to tackle it come year 13. So talk to your teacher, say, look, this is what I don't understand. Can you explain this, this, and this? Look up the physics and maths tutor summary notes and chem revise. They're really good 
and figure it out from there. With physics, as I said, more than biology and more than chemistry, the way you get good at physics is by practicing questions. So just sit there, do as many questions as possible. And also, as I said, don't ignore the experimental side of it. Learn your required practicals, learn how different apparatuses work, learn uncertainties because they will come up. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. I have every faith that you guys will do well in your A-levels. A-levels isn't easy for anyone. Literally, I had so many breakdowns. I was so upset that I'd fail my A-levels and I ended up doing really well. Um, A-levels isn't easy for anyone. Just trust in yourself and trust in the process. If you want another video on A-levels, how to ace them or any part of the revision learning process, comment down below and the comment that gets the most likes, I will be filming a whole video on using all my expertise. Best of luck. I know you're going to smash it. And lastly, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on post notifications.